Hello, hi, welcome back to my course on enhancing soft skills and personality. This is week number 8 and unit number 4 and lesson number 39. Just one more lesson to go and we will be completing this course. So, this is the penultimate lesson. So, I thought that you need a lot of tips to improve your memory and remember what all have been told to you. So, this unit will focus on improving your memory. And before we start discussing on how to improve your memory, let us take a quick uh, look at what I did in the previous one, highlights of the last lesson. In the last lesson, we learnt about the power of mind and why it is important to manage mind and train memory. Human mind is capable of creating happiness or sorrow on its own by its own capabilities. So, it is the mind that creates hell or heaven and it is depending on how you use it. You can make your place, your surrounding happy or a very uh, sorrowful place. By organizing your mind and focusing it on a highly valuable task, you can become a better and happier person than what you are now. And the other interesting factor that was uh, discussed was this that only 10 percent of our mind is used for most of our accomplishments. And imagine if we can make use of the remaining 90 percent, we will be able to achieve great feats. But most of the times we are wasting about 40 percent of our uh, mind capacity in storing trash, useless information which we should not do and try to restore that 40 percent along with the 50 percent of unused uh, part in the mind and use that 90 percent combined with the 10 percent, 100 percent efficiently. <coughs> to do that, we need to hypnotize our minds using auto suggestion and uh, you do not need to go for any specialist training in order to do that. You just keep watching your thoughts and interfere at the right moment to give direction and preventing it from going astray. Especially when negative vibes are there, negative thoughts are there, you just check it at the right moment and inject counter it with positive thoughts. And then many people think that uh, uh, by comparing with someone else, they think that somebody is better than themselves and they feel low in terms of their capabilities. Actually, mind power for each person is unlimited and in this sense, the only competition is with oneself, not with everyone. One has to use one's mind to push oneself from one level to another. It is all in the mind and mind games are to be won first. Much of life's crucial decisions depend on effective thinking, which is possible by collecting relevant information not taking any decision in great hurry, letting facts come and sink in your mind and memory while sleeping, thinking afresh in the morning after letting the subconscious mind work out with all the information that we have given as inputs and then wait for the outputs to come in a very relaxed atmosphere where you take a morning thoughtful walk in a natural surrounding. And most important of all, allowing your gut feelings to prompt right action. Memory works through association of ideas. So, that is what I talked to you at the time of concluding the previous lesson and I gave some examples as how you can use memory to remember things by using association of ideas. However, most part the association works at a very uh, subconscious level, but to make it conscious you need to train it, you need to give it some training <coughs> in a very conscious manner. So, in this lesson, let us see how you can make the best use of memory, how you can train and then how you can make your mind function in a very organized manner. Now, let us begin with remembering names and faces. Normally, we like those people who remember our names and call us frequently by our names. Some of we start liking them and then those people who remember us from the first introduction, we somehow develop a kind of affection thinking that those people like us. So, that is a human tendency. We tend to think that those who do not remember our names 
as those who do not take us seriously or those who do not consider us worthy of maintaining relationships with them. Anyway, you as a professional and in case you reach a good position, you have to remember all the names of the people that you are associated with. Forgetting even one name can cause some embarrassment. Especially the person may even feel offended if you forget. In worst situation and in a very funny humorous manner it can happen, you may wrongly associate the face of a person with the wrong name in the sense that the person's enemy's name may come to your mind and then if you call the person by that name, immediately uh, the individual may feel offended. The name that the person does not want to hear and you have confused this person for that name. So, avoid that kind of embarrassment by remembering the names correctly. However, these days people are increasingly losing their abilities to remember names or faces which may be due to the surplus of information received. So, today there is this overflow of information and then we are suffused with information everywhere and it is very difficult for uh, the mind to process and then decide what will be kept for short term memory and what will be kept for long term memory and often we do not give it enough time in terms of processing. But apart from that, there are certain other things we do such as causing stress or suffering from fatigue or just not sleeping properly or not eating properly. Now, all these uh, negative things can exhaust the brain, it can make it tired and it can affect the normal and brisk functioning of the mind. So, if you want to uh, organize your mind properly, so remember to eat well and sleep well. So, remember the lessons we did before in terms of managing your health. Another interesting reason for people not remembering names, this has been pointed out by Harry Lorraine in his Secrets of Mind Power where he says, many people who constantly complain that they forget names do not really forget them. Rather he says, they never remember them in the first place. As a matter of fact, sometimes they never even hear them. So, what does it mean? Actually you do not forget things. In the first uh, instance, you do not remember, you do not even bother to remember, you did not pay enough attention, you just uh, thought that you heard something, but actually you did not listen, you did not act as a proper listener, active listener, you were a marginal poor listener at that time. So, in this context, Lorraine suggests that the first rule for remembering names is that you should hear the name properly the moment you are introduced to someone. So, normally in a, a social gathering when you are introduced to someone, it is very difficult to hear even sometimes especially when there is music around, people are dancing, making lot of noise, smiling, cracking jokes and you cannot catch the name quickly. But still, if you cannot remember the moment you are introduced to someone, you should not feel embarrassed to ask the person to repeat her name or spell it for you. Now, people generally like to share such information especially about their names. So, you should not feel embarrassed, you can rather ask the person, so how do you spell it? Okay. And then when you split the spelling, if it is a long name, you will be able to catch the pronunciation and you will be able to uh, remember it. The associated technique in terms of remembering this is once you have got the name correctly, once you have registered the name mentally in your mind, you should use it, you should mention it, you should say it, you should utter it at least three times to retain it in memory. Let us say you are introduced to Sheila. So, nice meeting you Sheila, use the name and then how did you like the food Sheila, do you like this Sheila etcetera etcetera while going after giving some gap. So, you go and say good night Sheila, so see you sometime later Sheila. Like when you use the name at least three times, so then it enters into your memory and then it is very difficult to erase it. So, as Lorraine points out, most of the times you forget because you never remembered. 
So, you try to remember by registering it. Then in terms of remembering names and faces, according to Lorraine, the best way to remember names and faces is to associate the name to the face and he says it can be done in two ways. One, by making the name mean something and second, by tying the name to the face. Okay. Let us see uh, how we can uh, work it out. In both cases, one has to use one's creative imagination. Giving meaning to a name will be easily done if the name itself means something like for example, Mr. Greenwood. So, green, green color, wood, you can remember wood from tree, the material. So, Mr. Temple Brown. So, you can remember a temple and you can remember that it is in brown color. Indian names such as Miss Chandini. So, you know it is from moon. So, you can remember off moon and you can remember her face something like moon and Mr. Surya. So, you can remember it is from sun. So, uh, you can associate meaning and then when you link the meaning with an image, it is very easy to remember. But the problem is with those names where it is very difficult to identify some meaning. So, there are names apparently appear to be without any uh, meaning that is associated with the root meaning of the name. So, in case of names without any meaning, one needs to give meaning. So, you have to use your creativity. So, Lorraine for example, gives a very interesting case, the name like Stapleton. So, at the first instance, it looks like what meaning can you have for this uh, kind of uh, name, but he says that you split it, okay, staple ton. Now, it is easy for you to remember by imagining that there are so many staples that weigh a ton, okay, so many staples weighing a ton. Similarly, I can give another example, an Indian name like Himanshu, which actually indicates the moon radiating cool light. But in case you do not know the meaning and then let us say uh, you are from some other part of the country, so you cannot associate this person with cool moon rays and then you need to figure out some way or other. So, then again you can split the name and then for example, you can easily remember as somebody, so here him a male person with an shoe. Okay. So, it is based on the rhyming and giving meaning. So, Himanshu, so you are splitting that. Now, here do not look for grammatical correction in an. So, you will say it should be a shu and then you will also say it should be uh, always used as shoes. So, remember the previous rule we discussed in the last lesson that if you are able to make as many illogical associations as possible, your mind will remember. So, the moment you make it logical, it will forget. It is like uh, driving on a long highway where it is the same monotonous situation where you are following trucks or overtaking one truck and then uh, going before the other and then overtaking one and going before the other and you are repeating the same thing and then it gets monotonous and then your mind will slightly uh, try to fall asleep even without your ability to control it. Now, why it happens? Because things are going in a very normal routine manner and it is getting repeated in a very logical straightforward manner, but when it is illogical, mind will remember. So, it gets a jolt, it thinks that oh, it is not like the normal one. So, I should keep this in mind. Okay. So, try to give that jolt by using illogical connections and then trying to remember that and link that as in the second uh, method with an image. That is what is meant by tying the name to the face. So, here you need to associate an image or a distinctive feature of the person with the name. Now, the distinctive feature of a person may be a mole, a moustache and the different size and shape of the moustache, a protruding tooth dimples on the chin, hair color itself can be uh, very 
uh, distinctive, hat style can be distinctive, nose size, ear size, etcetera. So, these are all distinctive uh, features of a person and identify something very distinctive in this uh, character, in this face and note that. The next interesting thing is like no two people find the same feature distinctive. So, what you may find it different, unique is not the one somebody else will also find on the same person. The other interesting thing is that some people do not note what some others note in a person. So, you may note that the person, the girl that whom you are seeing is noted for her uh, smile and then you note the dimples, okay. but the other person with you has not even noted. When you share that the person says, oh did she have uh, dimples, I did not note it. Okay. So, that is something interesting. So, mind works differently for different people. So, you identify the one that is distinctive for you and then link it and then associate the name with the image. Again uh, looking at some uh, typical Indian names, let us say Surya is from the sun and you then try to link some quality of sun that is gold. So, you see Surya is wearing a gold tinted spectacles. Okay. So, when you remember gold tinted spectacles, then gold Surya will come to your mind or Chandini for example, moon. So, you can say Chandini is wearing a silver bracelet. So, look at Chandini wearing silver bracelet, whether she is wearing it or not, you imagine that she is wearing it and then link that with silver bracelet and silver moon and then immediately you will recollect the name. So, for practice, what you should do is you should cut out pictures from magazines, give them names and use them as cue cards for improving your memory. And then in due course what will happen, let us say you have about 100 faces, 100 different names, you will rather even quickly associate with some of the cue card that you have and then identify a new face and you will recollect the face very quickly at a later stage. Now, in this case, you should be also uh, be able to use some memory aids. Now, in order to make your memory work for you, often you need to use some memory aids, okay. some tips. So, what could be the aids? For example, a small white board okay, in which uh, you can write on a sketch pen and then erase it, white board marker pen and erase it or even a notice board in which you can write even using a chalk piece or something, where you can list all the items you have to do and once it is done, you rub it off or you strike it off. So, this can contain a, a to do list on one side, event list on another side, shopping list on a third side. You can also use a notebook or a diary or a small notebook that you can carry in your pocket, pocket notebook, where you can maintain tasks to do, items to buy and once you buy you can remove it. Many people just use simple piece of paper in which they make list and then once it is done they throw it. In fact, they make a different list for different things and once it is done they throw it and write a new list. Today you can use any mobile or computer application for managing list, there are plenty of applications, use the one that you prefer. So, they even send you reminders, they can use your email to send reminders, okay, they can pop up and tell you why do not you wish someone it is their birthday today and so on. And then when you make the list, so using these apps or uh, uh, when you want to remember them again, you can rearrange the list as per priority and then buy the topmost one first, do the topmost one first or arrange them according to number or use the alphabet or even you can give color, you can use color to identify most important, least important tasks. So, in case of a shopping list, let us say you have to go and shop things from 4, 5 shops. So, you can arrange the items according to the road map that is the first shop that comes. So, you will buy something and then you will take a turn, you have to take a different direction where you will find the second shop and then the third one. Instead of uh, uh, buying something that is at a longer distance first and then coming back to something that is available at a shorter distance, 
again going to buy something at the longest distance. So, you should buy from the small one and go to the longest one in distance or first go to the longest one buy and come to the next that is longer and then smaller and the smallest in terms of uh, distance. So, that will save you so much time. So, all it needs is planning. Uh, it should not happen that okay, you went to the shop and forgot that oh that should be purchased from the other shop. So, that is why you arrange geographically according to the road map and according to the shops which are coming and the items are listed according to the shops in terms of their order of appearance on the road. And then apart from these things you can train your mind and memory by certain other simple techniques. One technique that I find it very easy and uh, uh, quite uh, beneficial even in exams even when you have to recollect something. Uh, concepts, names, you can use numbers or alphabets for recalling names which are on the edge of your memory. So, alphabets can be like Hindi or English or any of your language, you use that and you can link uh, the word or concept or name and when you forget it by saying that one by one, you will uh, actually get that in your mind. So, let us like look at an example for instance, you know that you will get the name if you somehow recollect the beginning. In most of the cases either you remember the beginning or you remember the end of something, a name or a thing. But if you get either the beginning or the end, so you will be able to remember this. So, let us say you know that the name ends with this sound n, n. So, in such case mentally you need to say each letter of the alphabet and then end that with n such as so a n and then b n. So, you will know ok a n it is not Ashwin b n. So, it is not beacon or something c n ok d n and when you go one by one and then when you reach v n. So, it might strike in your mind immediately that oh that is Varun, so you got it. So, you can do this even when you are not able to recollect very quickly while talking to the person, mentally you can very quickly rush through and then get the name and then say that hi Varun, how are you ok. And in exams you can again link concepts and then that particular word, let us say that is the key word or that is the one word answer that you are not able to remember. So, that again you use this method at least try to say uh, the alphabets by the time you uh, reach even midway. So, you will be able to get it. You can practice this even for purchase list or anything that you remember, but find it difficult to recollect. Other uh, tips for uh, training your mind and memory focus on activity at hand, this is very important that concentration, when you concentrate, so mind absorbs things and it is easy for the mind to retain it in memory. For example, when you read, although you may say that uh, I am reading and then listening to songs, so then the reading is easy for me, actually you are not letting your mind and memory work very efficiently. Ok, sometimes you try to handle a monotonous task by keeping the TV on or listening to music, but normally if you want to read something and remember that for a long time and when you read something serious, let us say for your exam or for your presentation you are preparing something, avoid keeping the TV on or the um, tape recorder on. So, do not listen to something and then keep your mind years occupied and then again you are forcing that to remember something that you are absorbing uh, through your eyes and then taking it to your mind. It is easy for the mind to remember when it can concentrate on one single task. And when you do something register details in your mind. So, usually you just do something with a vague mindset and then you do not figure out details. This happens to people normally for instance, while locking your door 
at your home or at your office, you should not think of something else. Now, if you do not pay attention at that time that you are locking the door and let your mind jump to some other thought. So, you lock, but your mind is thinking, oh, I have to meet that person on the way. So, will that person be there in the canteen? I have to rush, already it is getting late. Now, when you are locking it, your mind is not there, but off of the way, there will be a nagging feeling in your mind, because you let it jump at that moment. So, your mind did not register the fact that you had locked the door and it will keep on nagging and giving you the doubt and you will keep on asking, did I lock the door? So, and then it is uh, very dangerous in this place to leave it unlocked and then any thief, anybody can enter. And then instead of making that appointment in time, you will rush back to check and you will find that it is locked. But that is just for your satisfaction. So, you will go back to check again. Why it happens? Because while locking, your mind jumped on something else and you did not pay attention. So, that paying attention and not letting the mind jump and telling the mind and making the memory register that you locked it is very important. You can also keep the mind active and keep your uh, uh, memory very lively by uh, keeping the brain active such as by playing games which will involve any kind of mental activity and then that will stimulate the mind to think keep uh, certain facts in mind or practice activities that will need your memory uh, things like working out puzzles okay playing scrabble playing chess and learning a new language which again is a challenge. So, mind has to remember so many things. So, they all keep the mind active and today for even small thing, we do not use our mind and memory and then we sort of rely completely on the electronic gadgets and then use them as uh, projections and we completely rely on them. So, what you should do for example, for simple calculation you do not go to the calculator. So, use your memory, use your mind. So, whenever you go to calculator for small thing, you are depriving of your mind and memory to practice, to exercise and keep both of them active. So, towards concluding this, I would like to say that by using these tips, suggestions and uh, very uh, well experimented wise thoughts by great experts uh, in uh, mind and uh, memory whose thoughts and books I have shared it with you and I am going to show that at the end of this uh, lecture also. You should be well organized and when you are well organized, what are the benefits? You will be completely in control of your life and you will be efficient in getting your jobs done in time. So, you will do more things than the normal people and much more efficiently than the normal people. That is because you are using your mind in a very organized manner and using your memory to the maximum and using your mind power for 100 percent. And you will always remember where you have kept important things. You will not search for the keys. So, you will not search for those files. Okay. Even if you have misplaced it, you will recall it very quickly and you will always remember important dates and appointments and you will never forget birthdays and anniversaries of people close to you. So, that the relationship gets enriched instead of uh, getting embittered when you forget the important uh, functions of people who are close to you. Now, let me conclude this with two important thinking in terms of the art of living. The first one is from Bretton Russell. He says, to be without some of the things you want is an indispensable part of happiness. Now, in the entire program, entire course, I have been telling that uh, develop your soft skills so that you can get this, develop your uh, personality so that you can achieve this, you can accomplish this. But I also told you that it is important that you compete with yourself, you develop for yourself and then you do not uh, 
try to compete with someone and whatever you get, you will get it for yourself. But at the same time in this uh, uh, world, you may not get everything that you are aspiring for. So, Russell says that uh, even if you do not get some of the things you want, so he says that that is an indispensable part of happiness. So, he says that does not matter, that sense of lack that I did not have that, but I am having certain other things. So, that is important for really feeling happy. Rather he says, if you have everything, whatever you want in uh, life, if you have everything with you, he is implying that you will be unhappy, you will not really be happy. Now, let us look at the next one from John Greenleaf Whittier. So, he also makes another interesting thing that you should remember throughout your life. He says, for of all sad words of tongue or pen, he says that all the words which are spoken, which are sung in the form of poems are written as wise thoughts. The saddest are these, whatever is said or whatever is written, he says the saddest words are these, what are they? it might have been, okay. meaning I could have done this, it might have been. So, it was possible I could have tried, I did not do. Okay. That sense of regret, I could have done, but I did not do. So, try something that uh, you will always remember that you tried doing and then try to succeed in life, never have this sense of regret that you should have tried, but you did not do. So, all the suggestions, uh, all the tips which are given in this course will happen, will materialize only if you are willing to work it out. Okay. You should not uh, later feel that, oh so much I did for the course, but I should have done that, I should have tried it. So, if only I did that, I would have got this. So, do not give that kind of uh, uh, regret, do not let that come into your life. So gain this uh, happiness just by living both in terms of keeping some sense of lack, but on the other hand trying to try out something which you have not tried so far. And having a feeling that I tried, so I am happy. Okay. It is a different game whether you succeed in that or not. And these are the two books which I mentioned in the previous one also try to get them, improve your memory and then try to know more about your mind power and try to improve that also. I hope with these ones you will be able to uh, develop your uh, mind, your memory and then enhance your soft skills as well as achieve whatever you want in uh, this life without this sense of regret. Wish you all success and thank you for watching this uh, video. Have a nice day. Thanks again.